everyone. Welcome to the channel. My name is Nick Cosgrove and I am back with this week's No Filter Q&A. This is the episode where I answer all questions related to diet, training, and supplementation that I received over the last seven days from our in-house clients, online clients, as well as a few of our online client, uh, followers. Remember, if you have any questions related to diet, training, or supplementation, please feel free to email me your questions at nick at foreverfitperformance.com. You can also DM them to me on my Instagram at fitcosgrove underscore. I am answering these questions in chronological order. I am going through as many questions as I can per week. I'm trying to get these questions in under 30 minutes. So I'm trying to keep each Q&A episode to under 30. Just a reminder, we also have a separate um, Q&A that we offer on our online training platform. And we put that up every Tuesday evening as well. If you'd like more information on that, you can also email our office administrator, Mia Watson at Mia at foreverfitperformance.com. Um, all right, so let's get started with this week's first question. Here we go. Uh, question number one. Uh, Nick, there is something wrong with my ankle. I can't run at all. It's so painful when I run. I should take it. Should I take a few weeks off training completely? It doesn't bother me when I train legs, just when I run. I want to lose 20, 20 pounds before my brother's wedding in August. Help. Um, okay, so there's other ways to lose weight besides running. You don't need to run, right? I mean, I'll tell you right now, I, I, I've competed in over, oh God. 30 plus bodybuilding shows and getting my body fat down to 5% or less. I've never, ever ran for any of those shows. Um, in my opinion, the best way to lose body fat is low intensity, long duration cardiovascular sessions. Okay. So the whole ideology of having to run to burn body fat, that's ludicrous. Okay. It's, it's, you don't have to do that. Um, so forget about running. If you can't run right now, no problem. You can do other forms of cardio. Um, you want to stick to non-weight bearing exercises such as the bicycle, um, stationary bicycle, or the elliptical trainer. In my opinion, the elliptical trainer is going to work better because you're going to burn optimal, more calories um, when you're standing versus seated. Um, another good option would be the rowing machine because even though you're seated on the rowing machine, you are going to exert a lot more energy. So if you're at a gym where you have um, access to either a rowing machine or an elliptical trainer, I would recommend using that. Both of those are great because they're non-weight non bearing exercises. Now you can still weight train. You mentioned that you can still train legs. So I see no problem with uh, giving a few weeks off running, but don't think, oh, I can't lose any weight now because I can't run. Uh, running is not the be all end all exercise to burning body fat. Um, in fact, they've done studies and they've shown that swimming, for example, burns the most amount of energy. So if, if you were to actually take up swimming, for example, that would burn even more calories. So don't think that you have to run to burn body fat. That's not true. Um, and again, what I recommend to most of my clients who are trying to lose weight, low intensity, long duration. So what I'll usually have the majority of my clients do if they're on a weight loss program is I'll have them do 30 to 45 minutes of fasted cardio in the morning or 30 to 45 minutes of cardio immediately after their weight training session. Um, and that works best in my opinion, because you're going to be doing your cardio in a fasted state, which means you're going to be using fat as your primary fuel source. So don't worry if you can't run. I, I can tell you right now that I never ran for any of my contest preps. I don't have a single one of my clients running on a treadmill who's getting ready for a contest right now or just looking to burn fat. You don't need to do it. I mean, if you enjoy running, by all means do it, but don't think that's the only way to burn fat because it's not. You've got the elliptical trainer, you've got the stationary bike, or you've got the rower. All those work fine. And if you have access to a pool, swimming works great. Like I said, there's some studies that show that swimming burns a lot of calories. So if you have access to a, a swimming pool or you can go join the YMCA, I would do that as well. All right, next question. Uh, question two. Uh, hi, Nick. I was wondering if you write your own blogs or if you have someone or if you have someone who helps you write them. <laughs> I don't believe in ghostwriters. Okay, absolutely not. The only time I ever used someone to help edit my writing was when I, uh, I wrote everything up for our website originally. 
So I, I wrote all, all the information with regards to our, our, our services, our private training, partner training, small group training. Um, I wrote who we are, um, all about our company. And then I, I actually hired someone to edit and proofread all of our, all that information. Um, but as far as my blogs are concerned, no, I don't have a ghostwriter. I just kind of write how I'm feeling that week. Or if I have a question from a client that I find is actually a good topic to write about, you know, I'll... I'll start writing about that as well, but I've never had anyone write my own blogs. I, honestly, I don't believe in ghostwriters. I think, um, I think if you use a ghostwriter, you're not really a writer. Period. I don't think that. I, I think, especially if you're a blogger, if you're a blogger, everything should be coming from you. It should be authentic. Uh, yeah, I, I, I make mistakes. I'm not a perfect writer. I know I have some grammar errors for sure. Um, but I just write how I'm feeling. You know, if, I, if I'm in a bad mood and I'm, I feel like taking it out on the fitness industry, I'll do that. I just wrote a blog this week that uh, I kind of just kind of disrespected the fitness industry and I really enjoyed writing it. And then last week, you know, I wrote about the shooting in Texas and that was a really hard blog to write. Um, so it just depends how I'm feeling. And that's that I just write what I'm feeling. And, you know, I, I of course, I try to edit it to the best of my ability. But at the end of the day, I, I find, you know what? Just write how you're feeling and raw, raw works. And a lot of people really enjoy my blogs. And I really appreciate that because I put them out every week and I get a lot of good positive feedback from that from clients. They'll send me emails saying, I really enjoyed your blog this week. It was really well done. Um, and, you know, that's great. And I guess some people who actually don't agree with what I have to write. And that's great, too. I, I like a little bit of controversy, too. So I'm always open to hearing feedback from people. But I, I really don't think if you have a ghostwriter, don't write at all. Seriously. Like, I mean, that's the whole idea about being a blogger. It's just fun. Just write what's on your mind. You know, if someone doesn't like what you have to say, that, then don't read it. That's fine. I never take anything personally. Um, but I really enjoy writing my blogs. And sometimes they're going to be related to fitness and diet. And sometimes they're not. As I mentioned last week, I wrote about the shooting in, in Texas. And that was a really hard blog to write. And I had a lot of positive feedback on that blog. And I wasn't expecting that. But I really like, I didn't enjoy writing that blog, but it felt good to express my feelings, how I was feeling. And it just, it felt like it was a form of therapy for me to just, to say what I felt about that particular situation. Um, and really that's what blogs are about. It's just, you know, it, it's not about marketing for the company. It's just writing how I feel. And that's how I feel. Um, this week, I, as I mentioned before, I put out a blog about, uh, I think what, what did I call I kind of I call the blog fuck the fitness industry because I was just fed up with the fitness industry and all these booty gains and doing it for the gram and uh, no pain no gain and I, you know, I said you know enough of this and I want to I want to target that and that's what I went with so yeah I don't use ghostwriters I never have I never will if ever I want to quote somebody I always give them um, you know I'll, I'll always make sure if ever I quote somebody I always say who it's from I always I always give them credit to who I'm quoting but uh, no all my blogs are from me. I don't use a ghostwriter, never have, never will, raw, unfiltered. That's how you do a blog. Like it, don't like it, I don't care. All right, uh, next question. Uh, hey, Nick, what are your thoughts on BC's new law to decriminalize possession of some illegal drugs? It's interesting because uh, Charlene and I were having this conversation earlier today about that as well. And I can always see both sides. That's a problem with me. I can always see one side and I can always see the other side. Uh, right now, I think it's actually, personally for me, I think it's actually a good direction to take. That's my personal opinion. And I can tell you that from working in a gym where on a daily basis, before I even open the gym, I have to clean a stairwell that's full of syringes, full of human feces, um, full of all, I don't even want to mention <laughs> the grossest things you could imagine that are in that stairwell before I even open the gym. Cause we work, we have a gym in the downtown East side. Um, so I can kind of see both sides. Do I think it's going to fix the solution? I don't know. I mean, after five, 10 years, we're going to see if this does fix the solution, but I can tell you right now, I have three criminal defense lawyers on my roster of clients and they all tell me that throwing people in jail for trafficking half an ounce of cocaine or an eight ball of cocaine or a few caps of ecstasy, it doesn't solve the problem. Okay. Um, what they're trying to target right now are people who are trafficking fentanyl, right? And, and that's a huge thing right now. 
Okay, so I'm more concerned about that than anything else. Now, if someone's caught with possession with a little bit of cocaine or a little bit of ecstasy on them, no, I don't think they should be put in jail for that. I really don't. I think that's ridiculous. Um, but if, again, if it's a large quantity and they're trafficking and they're making a profit, then of course, yeah, I think there should be some jail time for that. Um, where I'm really concerned about right now is the fentanyl. Um, and I, like I said, I have a few criminal defense lawyers on my roster of clients, and they're telling me that's where they're really cracking down on these particular individuals, people who are trafficking large amounts of the substance, um, because that's killing people, right? And so I think that's where the focus needs to be on. And do I think decriminalizing the low positions that low possession is a good idea? I do. I honestly do. Because if you think about people who are really just selling the stuff just to support their own habit, I mean, how much harm are they really doing to society? And I can tell you from someone who on a regular basis cleans human shit from his stairwell for my business. Yeah, I get aggravated. I get mad. But by no means do I think oh, we should throw this person in jail. I always think, how bad does your life have to be if you have to take a shit in a stairwell? Like, think about that for a second. Like, how bad is your life right now? Do you really think throwing someone in jail who has to do something like that because they're addicted to drugs and they live on the streets, do you think that's going to solve the problem? I don't. I, I honestly don't. And you know, as I mentioned, my clients who are criminal defense lawyers, they've told me it's not solving the problem. Throwing these people in jail does not solve the problem. So I'm always open to new ideas. Um, and let's see, let's see if this works. Before we say, no, this doesn't work. This is crazy. These people should be locked up. Let's see, because I'll tell you right now, if you look at the overdose deaths in Vancouver, British Columbia right now, they're not looking too good. So let's try something, right? So yeah, I'm for it. And I know I'll probably get a lot of hate on this right now, but I am for it. Um, I think right now it's our only option. And let's go with that and see, and, and see, let's see in the next five, 10 years, let's see if this works. If it takes down the overdoses, you know, and let's see if it, take, if it works. Because I, I, this is someone who's speaking to you who, who is working in the downtown east side and who sees this on a regular basis. Um, a few weeks ago, I had someone who actually overdosed upstairs in the front of in the front of our gym, you know, and I had I had to actually call 911 by the time they got there. I mean, the person was gone. I think the person was gone before they even got there. It's sad. So let's focus on the fentanyl and let's see if we can actually put the, the, the manpower on what needs to be focused on and leave those individuals who are using a little bit here and there alone. I mean, no, and I, I really don't think someone who is using uh, like I said, a half an ounce of cocaine or a little bit of ecstasy here and there, I don't think they should be thrown in jail. And I, I stand firm on that. That's, that's, that's my belief. And of course, you know, you're entitled to your opinion. I'm entitled to mine, but that's my belief. I don't think that someone who is caught with a small, a small substance um, of narcotics should be thrown in jail. That's my stance. All right. Uh, next question. Uh Hi, Nick. I'm not a client, but wanted your perspective on this. I paid another fitness company $1,500 upfront for the year for unlimited group classes. At the time I made the purchase, there, was, there were four morning classes each week I wanted to attend. After two months, the owner now tells me no more morning classes, but I can't get a refund. However, I can still come to the evening classes. The problem is I can't attend the evening classes. Would you ask for a refund or just accept this due to COVID conditions? No more COVID conditions. <laughs> okay, let me let me get this clear. Uh, in Vancouver, British Columbia, gyms, we don't have any more COVID conditions. So if you have a business owner saying, well, because of COVID, we can't do this or that, that's bullshit. Um, what sounds to me like the morning classes are not working right now. Sounds to me like there's just nobody attending those morning classes. So they're saying we're not going to hire an instructor and therefore you can attend our other group classes. The problem with that is that you signed up under the impression that you were going to get morning classes, maybe afternoon classes and evening classes. So you can take whatever classes you please. That was in your contract. 
if the changes and the stipulations have changed in that contract, you should definitely be asking for a refund. Um, we have group classes as well. And I'll, I'll be honest, there's some group classes of mine that, you know, there might only be two or three people that show up in the mornings. And, you know, I, I want to keep them going as, as consistently as I can. But at the end of the day, if only one person is showing up or one person is signed up for that class, I will eventually have to cancel that class. That's what's going to happen. But at the same time, I will give that person the option for a complete refund or they can join another group class. I won't just say, sorry, the class is canceled. You have to join another one of our classes. That to me is completely unprofessional and completely unacceptable. Okay. So if I were you, I would say, hey, look, you know, I signed up for this one year $1,500 down under the impression that I could get some morning classes. And now that's no longer an option. So I'd like my money back. I see nothing wrong with that. As a business owner, I would say, you know what, that's on us. Um, and we can't offer that anymore. Maybe we can offer some private training. If private training doesn't work for you, if it's not as cost effective for your budget. Okay, no problem. Here's a refund. Sorry for the inconvenience. That's how you run a business. You know, if someone is signing up to work with your company under the impression that they're going to get what you're promising them to get, and now you can't deliver that, then you say, look, I no longer can deliver that, but I can offer you this. If this doesn't work for you anymore, I'm happy to issue a full refund. That's good business, period. So to answer that question, I would ask for a refund. I mean, it sounds to me like you said, you can't do evening classes. That doesn't work with your schedule. So you say, look, this is what I signed up for. You're not offering anymore. To me, it's pretty black and white. I'd like a refund so I can go work with a company that can offer me that service. That's how it's done. Um, I, I get annoyed with this because I, I've known a few, I know a few fitness companies that have done shit like this before and they don't refund clients. So this is why I always tell clients, be very careful about giving your money to a gym or to a personal training company up front. Um, be very, very careful. Always get everything in writing. Always make sure everything is documented in the emails. I'm always very clear with my clients to say, okay, you purchased a 30 session private training package or a 30 session small group training package on this particular date. Give them an invoice, give them a receipt. So everything is on the record. And if something changes, luckily for us, nothing has ever had to change. But if something were to change, we would honor that and we would refund them for unused sessions. And that's how you do good business. Okay. Otherwise you're, you looked upon as a shady company. So yeah, I would ask for a refund and uh, go look for another fitness company that does offer morning classes. FYI, we have some morning classes. Just saying. All right. Uh, next question. Uh, okay. Uh, question five. Uh, hi, Nick. I've been seeing this woman who I like, but she has some really bad habits that I'm worried will rub off on me like overeating and poor diet. These are both old bad habits of mine that I don't want to come back to. Uh, easy question. Would you stay or go? I love these relationship questions. <laughs> um, I would go. Look, I mean, okay, again, I should not be giving relationship advice and I'm not giving any relationship advice to anyone, but I will tell you this. If I was dating someone that always wanted to go out to eat to restaurants and eat greasy fried food and wanted to drink every night, uh, I can tell you right now that wouldn't work with my lifestyle. I, I'm into the gym. I like to be active. I like to go for walks. I, I really like to stay um, healthy. Like I don't want to, you know, go to the bar and drink till 11 o'clock at night. Like I, it's not my style. So you're, if you're asking me, yeah, that just wouldn't work. It's nothing against that person, but you're not compatible. Um, and you know, I always say that you're a product of your environment. I, I really believe in that statement. I really do because it's the people who you surround yourself with. If you surround yourself with bar stars and people who party all day or who are constantly bitching and complaining that they never have money, you're going to become that. So I like to surround myself around people who are very optimistic and ambitious about life and they want to create businesses and they want to grow, they want to grow equity and, you know, they're looking to invest in real estate. Those are the people that I like to surround myself because it makes me want to be better and do better. I don't want to hang around with people who are always like, oh, I have no money or let's go to the bar. That's me. I'm not judging those people. It's just that I feel like I don't want to be brought down to that. <sighs> 
that I don't want to be brought down to that situation. Like for me personally. So if you're someone who works out regularly and follows a fairly clean diet, then yeah, that probably is not going to work. If you're trying to date someone who uh, likes to follow a really poor diet and likes to drink excessively and party, then yeah, that's probably not going to work. You don't need me to tell you that. I have no problem telling people this is not going to work. I've been in situations before where I've dated women in the past where I'm just like, you know, we're just not compatible. Our lifestyles are so different. You know, I'm up at five or six in the morning and you want to go to bed at two or three in the morning. This is not going to work. And it's nothing against them. It's just a different lifestyle. So they've got to find someone who likes to stay up to two or three in the morning and go to the bars at night. That's fine. You know, for me, I might need to be with someone who likes to work out regularly, follow a fairly clean diet and likes to go out occasionally, but not wants to go out and party their ass off till two in the morning. So you have to find what works for you. Um, again, I'm, don't ask me for relationship advice, but if would I date someone who I'm not compatible with? Absolutely not. Um, it'll only go so far, right? So no. Um, <laughs> I just find it funny that I'm getting asked relationship questions on this Q&A. Um, so no, I wouldn't. But if you do, uh, yeah, go for it. Maybe you can find some common ground. Maybe you can meet her halfway and maybe on the weekends you can go out till one or two in the morning and eat the bad food and go for a few drinks. And maybe during the weekdays, you can tone it down a bit, maybe find some common ground, but if not, I'd bail. All right. Next question. Uh, hi, Nick. I've got some serious gross looking cellulite on my ass. I've been squatting, lunging and doing endless step ups on the bench, but nothing is working. Do you have any recommendations as to what I can do to help fix this area? I had a similar question to this on last week's Q&A. Um, okay, so when it comes to trying to target certain areas like the glutes and the hamstrings for women, when it comes to, I'm assuming this question is coming from a woman. When it comes to targeting those areas, you really have to focus on exercises beyond squats, beyond lunges, beyond leg press, Back squats because those are great for firming your quads but now you've got to start focusing on okay how can i target those specific areas now what i would do and what i do usually with a lot of my female clients is i'll incorporate a lot of barbell hip thrust and as i mentioned on last week's q a not the machine hip thrust i really like to incorporate barbell hip thrust old school just take a barbell get some bumper plates on there and go get a pad obviously to support your uh, your hips and your quads just so to protect that area but barbell hip thrust, so you have to work your stabilizers and you have to focus on contracting your gluteus maximus and as well as stabilizing your gluteus minimus, okay? Um, another exercise I'd recommend, straight leg deadlifts, okay? So those are a little bit different than the conventional deadlifts. We do have a few videos up on my Instagram as well as the train app with regards to how to do a straight leg deadlifts correctly. There is a difference, but I find when you target those areas directly, that will really help firm and tighten the hamstring and glute tie-in. And that's a trouble spot for a lot of women. A lot of guys too, but women really focus on that area and they start to notice that's an area where body fat tends to accumulate. So what I, I recommend for a lot of my female clients is to focus on a lot of hip thrusts and straight leg deadlifts. I'll do those usually with my partner or private training sessions. In a group class, they're a little bit more difficult to incorporate because there's a lot of people and those are a little bit more complex exercises. But if you're really trying to target that area and trying to bring it in, I would recommend barbell hip thrusts, straight leg deadlifts. Um, you know, another thing that really works too, I find talking about lunges, stationary lunges. Um, and what I'll usually do is I'll take a riser and I'll have a client do either an elevation and or a depression lunge in conjunction with one another. Now, if you're not too sure how to do that, you can also go on our online app and check out the video. I've got lots of videos on how to perform these exercises, but that'll really help tighten and tone that glute and hamstring area, which I know is a trouble spot for a lot of women. I think it's a trouble spot for a lot of guys too, but guys don't really tend to focus too much on their lower body. They didn't focus more on their upper body, but I know I get a lot of questions about this from women, especially women who are 30 plus years old, who really start to notice that area starting to get a little bit more saggy or a little bit more loose skin in that area. So again, you can't spot reduce, but if you want to target those areas specifically, which I do recommend you do throw in some barbell hip thrusts and go as heavy as you can keep those reps between 12 to 15. 
Um, and, you know, combine that with some straight leg deadlifts. Again, keep those reps between 12 to 15. Don't be afraid to go heavy because remember, heavy weights are going to get the job done. If you go too light, it's really not going to do much. So obviously you want to make sure form comes first, but use a weight that you can control, but a weight that's challenging. Don't just use a weight that's light and you, you can just feel a nice light burn. You want to really want to feel that burn. So barbell hip thrust, straight leg dumbbell deadlifts. I do recommend doing dumbbell deadlifts versus barbell deadlifts. I find barbell deadlifts work more lower back. Uh, most of my clients feel it more in their hamstrings when they do dumbbell deadlifts versus straight leg barbell deadlifts. Try them both out and see which one you feel more. But I can tell you across the board that the majority of my clientele, when I, get, when I give them dumbbell straight leg deadlifts, they feel it much more than barbell straight leg deadlifts. Right. Okay, next question. Uh, Nick, I want to become a personal trainer here in BC, um, in BC, roughly how long does it take to get your license? And do you recommend a particular company that I should use? Um, so in British Columbia, there's a company you can use called, um, the, well, there's a few companies you can use, but the license that I would recommend that you try to get is the BCRPA license. The, re the reason I recommend BCRPA is that you can get insured for quite a bit, okay? Versus if you get some weekend course, I'm not gonna mention any of those licenses, but if you can get like, there are some courses that you can actually get a license within a weekend. The problem is they're not gonna insure, you're not gonna get an insurance company that's gonna back that license uh, for, large amount of money, you might get a couple hundred thousand dollars in insurance. But if you want to get really like insured, you want to get liability insurance, you know, if something happens to you, if you get sick, you can't work, BCRPA is the way to go. Because then you can get licensed to a really good insurance company. There's a few insurance companies out there, but they'll license you because you have your BCRPA certification. So I recommend to all trainers who are are all people who are trying to get their personal training license in British Columbia to get the BCRPA uh, license. Now, I do also recommend if you're going to try to get that license to do it through a company called InfoFit. Um, if you're here downtown British Columbia, they have a site, I believe, on Broadway and Ash, um, and they do some classes, I believe, on a weekly basis. So I think it's a, a few weekend courses along with a few weekday courses. Um, and I believe you have to take a theory test, then you have to take a weight training tests, and then you can go on to your personal training tests. So it takes about a year to a year and a half to get full through that program. It's a really good program. Um, and the reason I recommend that program is because they give you both theory exams and practical exams, which I think is so important. Um, myself, personally, I have my BCRPA and I have my ACE. My ACE is recognized worldwide. So if I decide to leave British Columbia, I could go train, say I want to train in Peru, or I want to train in Panama or Mexico, somewhere in North America. I could do that because I have my ACE certification. But I'll tell you right now, the ACE certification was incredibly easy for me to get. It was a theory test. I took it online. No problem. The BCRPA was much more challenging because I had to go through the theory and I had to go through the practical and I had to take three theory exams and I had to take two practical exams. And that was actually, the practical was much more challenging than the theory because practical you're with an instructor on the floor. So they're actually testing you on your teaching abilities. And that to me was much more challenging. I got so much more of that experience than just writing an exam. Because writing an exam, yeah, I can, I, can, I can easily memorize anatomy and physiology. That's easy. But if you're actually in real time and you're working with someone on the floor and all of a sudden they throw you a curveball and say, hey, I'll, I can't do barbell squats because I've got a herniated disc. You have to think on the fly and they'll throw those questions at you. So that's where I think practical comes in. So as I said, I've got both ACE and BCRPA. My ACE pretty simple test to take. I studied for it for maybe two days. I passed it. I think I got 82 or 83 percent. I don't remember. It was like a B, I think. But uh, that was pretty simple. My BCRPA, though, I'll tell you right now, is really hard. And um, I'm, I'm really happy I have that certification because I have a, I have a great uh, amount of liability insurance. Um, and that works really well for me. And also a lot of people, they look for that, too. When they're hiring a trainer in British Columbia, they look to make sure that you have your BCRPA because it's a really well-respected certification. So you don't go for one of those weekend courses. Don't get caught into that. I've had actually a few of my clients who wanted to be personal trainers who said, well, I'll just take a quick group and I'll just go. And again, I'm not gonna mention these courses because I don't wanna badmouth anybody, but there's certain 
courses out there that will give you your certification if you take their weekend tour course and then you pay them like $200 to take their exam. To me, that's complete bullshit because you really have to learn your anatomy, your physiology, and you have to be in the gym working with someone so you can get that hands-on mind-to-muscle connection with somebody you can learn and say, okay, well, I got to troubleshoot here. That's And that's why I recommend going through a company like InfoFit. I think InfoFit is great. I used them when I was uh, when I first came to BC. I thought that was a great company. Uh, my instructor, his name was Andre Noll, um, and I, I think he's still teaching. He's a great instructor, so I highly recommend, you know, if you can get in with InfoFit and take a few of his courses, he's great. Um, very thorough, and I've got nothing but good things to say about him, and he really helped me kind of propel my own career in the fitness industry. So that's what I'd recommend. Yeah, it takes a little longer, but you know what? The, the more education you have, in my opinion, the better. So if you're going through a license in Vancouver, British Columbia, my recommendation would be to get your BCRPA. Throughout North America, ACE works great. But again, look into your liability insurance and look into make sure that the, the whatever company you're using to insure you will insure you for a few million, not for a couple hundred thousand. Because worst case scenario, if you get sued, a couple hundred thousand is not going to help you very much. It won't. All right. Uh, next question. Uh, Nick, what's the difference between barbell curls and easy bar curls? I'm following your current arm workout and see that your arm workout includes both easy bar and barbell curls. Thanks. Okay, so the arm workout that he is referring to is on the online app that you can register for. It costs $49.99 a month and you get weekly workouts, um, unlimited questions to me, and you also get weekly revised nutritional plans, okay? And along with that, you get all my supplement protocols, all my dietary nutritional plans, all my training programs that I've designed for the past 20 years. Okay, so $49.99 a month. And again, like I said, we put a weekly Q&A up every Tuesday evening. Um, and on top of that, I always put up a new training program along with a new nutritional plan every week. So if you'd like more information on that, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, please feel free to email our office administrator, Mia Watson, Mia at foreverfitperformance.com, and she will set you up with how to register for that app. So to answer that question, uh, the difference between easy bar curls and barbell curls. So easy bar curls, you're using what we call like a cambered bar, right? Cambered bar is going to work more of what I call the short head of the bicep, which is also known as the peak of the bicep. When you do a double bicep, flexion. It's going to be that peak of the bicep. Okay. So easy bar curl works that perfectly. Now, when you do a barbell curl, barbell is a straight bar. You're going to work more of the long head of the bicep. You're also developing a little bit more of the outer head of the bicep. Okay. So the long head of the bicep is the length of the bicep. Now, the difference between the easy bar and the barbell is that the weight is distributed, distributely, uh, distributed, sorry, <laughs> distributed differently. Okay. That's hard to say. Distributedly differently distributed differently. <laughs> um, so it's where the weight is distributed. Okay. So you're, it's all about angles. And that's why I always tell a lot of my clients from my community, it's, it, it's all about angles. This is one big game of geometry. So if you're using a straight bar, you're working more of the long head, outer head of the bicep. If you're working, uh, using the easy bar, you're working more of the inner head, the peak short head of the bicep. So in most of my bicep tricep workouts, I'll have clients do both easy bar and barbell. I find them both to be beneficial and both to work different areas. It's just that they distribute the weight uh, a little bit differently on dif in different areas of the muscle bellies. That's all. Okay. Um, but I would recommend doing both. And of course, throwing in some dumbbell curls as well. Okay. Your biceps have two heads, your triceps have three heads. So in my opinion, a good bicep and tricep workout should include at least three bicep exercises and at least three tricep exercises. I usually like to give my clients about three to four bicep exercises and three to four tricep exercises. Okay. But you want to make sure you're targeting both the short head and long head of the bicep when you are training biceps. And you also want to make sure when you're targeting the triceps, as I said, there's three heads. Your outer head, your head, your outer head, your inner head, your long head. So you want to make sure you're targeting all those areas. Okay. And that just comes down to following a good training program that makes sure you are hitting all those areas so that you develop a very symmetrical physique. Right. Not, that's really what it comes down to. All right. Okay. Uh, next question. 
Hi, Nick. Uh, what are your thoughts on incorporating yoga or Pilates into a training split? Do you think it can help in any way or is it more of a fad? Okay. I, yoga is not a fad. I'm telling you right now, yoga is not a fad. Yoga works. This is from someone who has body build, build it for 20 plus years and never did any stretching, never did any, any Pilates, never did any yoga. And I paid for it. I'm still paying for it. Um, a lot of my injuries that have happened over the years have been due to mobility issues and flexibility issues. Now that I'm incorporating a little bit yoga into my workout routine, I feel great. Okay. So I can't stress this enough. If you are someone who is lifting weights, in my opinion, you should be doing yoga at least once or twice a week. And I'll plug her in again. I mean, I've plugged her in before on this channel, but I'll do it again. If you are looking to work with a yoga instructor, you need to work with Charlene, okay? Period. Because in my opinion, you want to work with someone who is experienced, who's educated. Don't just work with some flyby trainer. Um, I'd also recommend booking a private yoga session versus a group class session because you'll get so much more out of it. You won't even believe. I've done both. And I can tell you right now, there's a huge difference between working with someone privately versus working in a group class. Uh, you're working with someone one-on-one. -on -one, they're going to correct every little thing you do. Okay. So if you're someone who's new to yoga, I would definitely recommend booking a session with Charlene. Now you can do that through booking with her um, directly on through email, charlene at foreverfitperformance.com. Or you can also DM her at uh, her, her Instagram account, which I think is yoga Charlene. I'll, I'll include her, her Instagram account in this YouTube video. So you can direct, you can email her directly, but do I think it's beneficial? Absolutely. Yes. Um, first of all, it's going to increase your mobility and your flexibility, which is going to increase your range of motion. Okay. Which is going to improve your plane of motion. Uh, this is something that I was reluctant to do years ago. I thought, oh, no, stretching, I don't need to do that. Typical 20-something-year-old male, uh, egotistical bullshit. Now that I'm older, I see the benefits. So this is one thing I tell all my male clients. If you want to increase your muscle mass, you damn well better be doing at least one or two yoga sessions a week. And th that is exactly why I brought Charlene into the company for that, for my clients to actually benefit from that. And they have, I've seen it. So it works. So to answer that question, yeah, I, I, I strongly advise you to throw in a few yoga sessions uh, each week. Pilates, yeah, Pilates works. I have a few clients that do Pilates as well. I can see the benefits in Pilates as well. Um, but again, I don't think anything compares to booking a few private yoga sessions. I really don't. Because I've, I've seen, I've seen the benefits of it. So I'm like, wow, this is working really well. All of a sudden I have clients who couldn't do full range motion in the lunges, do a few sessions with Charlene, and all of a sudden they're getting their knee to the ground or they're getting their ass to the grass on a squat. So I see it. Plus I feel the benefits myself. So now I say, yes, definitely. If you can, um, you know, if you can't afford to work privately, yeah, group class works, but I can't stress this enough. If you're work, if you work privately with a very a qualified and experienced trainer, the benefits are incredible because they will correct everything. And they will take certain movements that you thought you were doing correctly and they'll change up the whole format. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, wow, this is how I should feel when I'm doing this particular movement. So that's what I'd recommend. I mean, again, I'm not trying to plug in Charlene's services here, but you're asking me my opinion. And I think Private yoga sessions are great. Would I do them? Absolutely. I think it's something that you should definitely add to your resistance training program, add to your training, uh, training split. I think you can get a lot of benefits from incorporating regular yoga sessions in addition to your resistance training sessions. Absolutely. All right. Next question. Uh, okay. Final question. Nick, top favorite rap artists of all time? Uh <laughs> Oh, of all time. Okay, in no particular order. No particular order. Eminem, Tupac, Notorious B.I.G., Nas. Ooh, who am I going to get for my last spot? I'd have to go with Run DMC. You know, it's a toss-up between Run DMC and LL Cool J. I like them both. Um, it's tough, though. Uh you know, I said no chronological order, but I am going to rate Eminem, in my opinion, as the best rap artist of all time. I know he's white, but again, 
I don't think anyone even touches him as far as creativity, his lyrics. I don't think anyone comes close. Um, but if anyone were to come close, I would think I'd give it to Tupac and Nas. Yeah. Uh, I know uh, people know when I work out, I like to listen to rap. I'm not a big rock fan. I like rap. I, I love 90s rap. But if I am listening from anything to, you know, 98 to 2000s, it's going to be Eminem. I'm not really up to date with these new rappers like Drake. And again, I have nothing bad to say about them. They're not my choice. But yeah, I, I, I like old school hip hop. I do. Uh, Run DMC and LL Cool J, I, I, I have to say they're both equal. So they're in my fifth spot for sure. Um, so I have to say six, you know, and, and that's who I would in. And Nas, I love Nas. I, I, have, I think 90% of my Spotify is Nas and Eminem. Um, it just, it gets me going in the gym. It just gets me going when I'm walking or I get the, I even love listening to that stuff when I'm working out or not working out when I'm just working. So those are my top five. Um, who are your top five? I'd like to know. I'd like to know who your top five artists are. I also, you know, I, I do like grunge music. I, you know, I love Nirvana. I, I like other music as well. Um, but when I work out, I really like to work out to rap old school hip hop. Um, I like a lot of the stuff from even the late eighties, uh, you know, early nineties. I'm a big fan of that stuff as well. Um, Mob Deep, all that stuff. But yeah, I'd have to give it to Eminem, Pac, Biggie, Nas, um, you know, Run DMC, LL Cool J. That, that's what I like. I like to listen to him. I'm older. So that's what I like. Uh, let me know what you like. I have a few guys who I train who are in their late twenties, early thirties. They like Drake and some of those new guys. I don't even know some of those new guys. Easy. I don't even know. Not Easy E. I like Easy E too. Easy E's long ago. I'm trying to think. I don't even know the new artist. That's how old I am now. But I'll play if I'll play that stuff for them now. Um, but yeah, that's who I listen to when I work out. Um, I can I can listen to that all day. That's what I like. Anyway, guys, that's it for this week's Q and A. Uh, this should be going up on Thursday evening. Remember, if you have any questions related to your diet, training, or supplementation, please feel free to email me directly, Nick at foreverfitperformance.com. You can also DM me your questions at Nick or sorry, Fit Cosgrove underscore. I will be putting Charlene's Instagram as well into the link into the description below, just in case you want to get in contact with her with regards to yoga sessions. Uh, and you can reach her at Charlene at Forever Fit Performance as well. And she does her yoga sessions at our training facility here in downtown Vancouver, British Columbia. She, off she also offers them online. Anyway, guys, that's it for now. Have a great night. Have a great weekend. And I will see you all next week. Thanks for now. Bye, guys.